What's good? It's your boy Stone here with DJ Clark Kent. Yes, sir. Clark Kent. That's right. How you doing, fam? I'm as good as they let me be. Word, word, word. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to start with the interview. Um, yeah, so how you get in the game? Because you, you've been in the game for a long time. I know it's, it's short. Like, how, how, like, how you, how you short start? version is my uncle was a DJ. Word. I love the music. And he let me play with it. He let me mess around with it. He never told me, but he let me mess around with it. Since so by the time I was nine and a half, I knew how to make it. And by the time I was 11, I decided I wanted to be a DJ for the rest of my life. So I've been playing. Parties and clubs and stuff like that since I was a little. Word, word. And then you did, you know, you did Game Day and Day. Yes, I did. You did that. Um, and then you became a producer as well. Yeah, yeah. How'd you go, yeah, how'd you go from that DJ to producer? Right? Well, the funny part is, is that um, when you DJ, I'm not going to say everybody, but, but like the evolution of a DJ says that if you're playing the music, at some point you want to actually dictate what the music sounds like. Yeah. Because that's the reason why you play the way that you play, so that you can dictate what it feels like in a club or in a party. Yeah. At some point you want to dictate what it actually sounds like to play. Yeah. So we start making it. Yeah. I just started making it and it came naturally because I wanted to hear something. Yeah. And it's just like, like just, were you not satisfied with the music? You thought you'd do it better? Or? Uh, no, it wasn't that. I, I just felt like I, I it, 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 you had drum drum machines when you were a DJ, you know, yeah. little beatboxes, yeah. and then the beatboxes became more. Um, more special, bigger, and then you could sample on some of them. So you started being more creative, and then actually you became a producer. It wasn't like you set out to do it. You just started making beats and tracks, and then all of a sudden somebody wants to rap on it. So now all of a sudden you're a producer. But then, if you're smart, you really care about the music, so you care about what the song sounds like all the way to the end. That makes you a producer. No doubt, no doubt. And you know, you got hits. You know, you got Love Boy. You got some records. You got some records. You got some records. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what were you thinking? I think your, your stuff was sort of next level. I mean, maybe, um, maybe, maybe. It might have been. Um, I just, I just felt like I wanted it to sound good. And um, when I sampled, I sampled on hard machines, but I just wanted it to be crystal clear and hard at the same time, but very musical. So like what I go for is melodically based music. So I mean, it comes out. If it, if it works, it works. You know what I'm saying? I'm not scared to roll the dice. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, so what do you think about music today? Like, I mean, for a while. I appreciate it. I like it. And um, I think it's a good time in music, especially with the recession, because it makes people go harder. Yeah. So it makes you be more creative. And then it makes the guys who have money say, I don't want to spend money anymore, so I'm going to go find a new guy who can make tracks for a lot less and then build a new career. So it's a good time right now. There aren't, there aren't those $1 million budgets out there anymore. Yeah. Guys are getting 100000 so they have to be crafty. Yeah. So you have to be more, you know, skilled at it. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Well, hey, hey. good talking to you.